In this video, we talk about co-op and Forge being better than ever before, map vetoing returning to Halo Infinite, and it looks like campaign challenges not part of the Halo Infinite experience. Well, I answer that and a lot more of your questions within this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So I went to my community page here, guys, and I asked you the question, is there anything else you want to know more about Halo Infinite? And you guys certainly responded a lot back. So I really appreciate the participation here, guys. We have over like 100 plus comments on it. So I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for taking part in some of these videos. If you guys want to take part in the next Q&A video session here, guys, make sure you tap subscribe to the channel to catch when those posts do go live as we do do these about once a week. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. First question comes from Joel Kracer saying, Hey Kev, love the videos. With the extra few months it will take to get co-op, campaign, and forge, do you expect there to be any improvements from previous Halo games? Now this is something I've actually been thinking about myself as well, is do we expect to see more than just like co-op returning to Halo, or do we expect to see more than just Forge returning to Halo Infinite? It's the only concrete thing that we know about Forge right now is that there's an undo and a redo button. That's the only concrete thing we know about Forge. Everything else has just been leaks, and the nature of about leaks, it's really just kind of bro trust me kind of stuff. Though from what we've seen from other games out there, especially like Far Cry 5's map editor was very well done. Allowing for terrain editing, AI added in there as well. Very well done graphically as well, where you can't really tell the difference between a well done fan creation map and the actual game itself. And I can only imagine that 343 would want to one up that map editor as well, or at least make it on par for Halo, because Halo 5's Forge is widely held as the best Forge that's ever been created for Halo, and I think most people would agree on that. But it actually, compared to like Far Cry 5's map editor, is a little bit less. But the reason why Halo 5's Forge was successful compared to Far Cry 5's was because of the community support and 3 for 3 supporting Forge creations, having these avenues for people to kind of express their creativity, especially with like the custom game browser, and just making it easy for people to download custom game modes and maps onto their games, which Far Cry 5 really did not do a good job of, and that's basically why they essentially cut their map editor because no one really used it. The developers made it hard to find games that you'd want to play or whenever you did, it wasn't really an enjoyable experience. Now the various leaks that we've seen about Forge in Halo Infinite is that once it'd be kind of a GitHub kind of experience. If you know what GitHub is, essentially it's a way for coders to kind of interact with each other, trade ideas, add upon each other's code, and then make something really special. Creating these asynchronous environments where you can create these different branches off of the main source and have it kind of all come back together which is something that the Forge community has kind of done already, but just now they're just kind of sounding like to make it more into an you know, official capacity. And a recent Reddit post from an unknown 343 employee that got a decent amount of traction and is still posted up there, so either it's completely fake or real, though again, this is the kind of the nature of leaks, that Halo Infinite's Forge is much more than just like a little map editor. It's like a basically an in-game developer tool to create some really awesome content. And in that Reddit post, the anonymous 343 employee does say that like if it comes out in six months he would be shocked and it wouldn't be surprised if it got delayed an entire year but that's because it's something really special and really cool that like if you really want to try to put forge into halo you gotta do it this way and it just blow everything out of the water so i do expect it to be better than halo 5's if not the best map editor that any kind of console can utilize now when it comes to co-op i'm not really expecting anything different because it's co-op. The whole idea of co-op is being able to play with each other online or split screen. And I don't really know if there's anything you can really add to it because that's just what you do with co-op. The head of design at 343, Jerry Hook, talks about this a little bit saying that Halo Infinite will be supporting two player split screen and four player online co-op or campaign. So one thing I would like to see happen is maybe player one or the host of the lobby plays as Master Chief and then second, third, and fourth players get the chance to play as their custom Spartans like we had like in Halo Reach as like their co-op Spartans within the world. I would really like to see something like that happen. That would be a nice little improvement while still maintaining like a Master Chief focused story experience, but being able to add in your extra Spartans from multiplayer would be a really fun addition. Boom Slayer asks, do you think the map veto system will return 
from Halo 3. I think Infinite really needs it. And well, you know what? I can understand why people would want that because it was a nice feature. It allowed the community to kind of have a much more say in like their experience with the multiplayer and things like that. Though I do like the veto system for that side of things, but I also don't like the veto system for that kind of stuff because oftentimes when players would get a map that they do not like, that like gets vetoed for that or whatever, then people just drop out of the match. Like, well, I don't like this map. I didn't get what I wanted. I'm bouncing out. This happens all the time. And oftentimes this will lead to people really just experiencing like the good parts of Halo Infinite or good parts of that multiplayer experience. So you never really get a chance to play out some of the other maps that were in the rotation as well, which kind of also has a double-edged sword of like, well, you get to allow people to play what they want and it's only the good stuff, but then you also get to miss out on some of the other content within the game, which could actually lead to the multiplayer feeling a little bit more stale. I remember back in the Halo 3 days, people were like, had the clan tag saying like veto for BR. People had, you know, gamer tags saying veto for BR and stuff like that because people wanted to play BR Slayer, but you know, it was mixed in the rotation of just regular Slayer. And if they didn't get BR Slayer, they would just bounce out. I think what 343 could do in the situation is just keep an eye on community sentiment and feedback on different maps and see like what are the good maps, what are the less favorable maps, and maybe put the maps that people like a little bit more in the rotation a little bit more than saying like the lesser favorite maps. Though from my experience, the maps that we did play on Halo Infinite, I liked them. I didn't find any of them like super awesome or super terrible. I thought they were pretty good maps. There wasn't anything that was egregiously terrible. First thing was the PvP flight that comes out this week comes around, then we'll get a better idea of like how good these maps really are. And also this just kind of adds to more downtime between playing games essentially if you're having this veto system. Most of the time for me when I'm playing, I just want to jump in and start playing. I don't want to like argue about what exact mode or, or type of map we're going to be playing. I just want to start playing the game and some maps are better, some maps are worse that's very true but for the most part like i kind of like most of the maps in halo and so essentially i think the veto system isn't really better it's just kind of different and also adds just like an extra step between you and being able to play more halo and so i think just going into the next match i'm fine with nicholas costanza asked will the halo infinite campaign have challenges to complete that progress the battle pass I haven't heard anyone talk slash mention this this is something I haven't really heard much about either. I assume it to be part of it because obviously I think that 343 wants to put more emphasis on the replayability of the campaign. That's why they're charging so much for it, you know. If we take a look at the Season 0 Battle Pass, this was part of the preview that they did before the last tech preview. Oh my fuck. Fletch, you ain't just fallen? Sorry for the interruption. Fletch just followed me on Twitch, which is like, what? Which if you haven't started following, make sure you check out the link in the description for the Twitch channel. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening. But back on topic before, I was so rudely interrupted by Fletch here from Ultimate Halo. That the challenges that we see are all multiplayer focused. Now, obviously, it's all part of the flight that we're having for the technical previews that are going to be obviously multiplayer focused. Because if you have anything campaign related, it's essentially going to be a leak. So... There's going to be that as well, though it's going to be kind of tricky maybe to keep track of the campaign side of challenges when it comes to Halo Infinite. With the more open and expansive world that we're going to have for Halo Infinite that it won't be so straightforward like we've had previously like we have right now with the MCC. For example, like in Halo Reach, this was this exploit right here which earned you like 100,000 credits within like 15 minutes of just kind of restarting this checkpoint over and over again. And so this is something that could possibly be done within the campaign as well of Halo Infinite because now that you're putting monetization involved with customization and progression, like you basically don't want to like run across people just doing this, cheesing the game, and then make it so then they might not have to really grind through the experience upping up that player engagement content that 343 really wants to have so you have higher numbers and more people playing the game. So then more people get a chance to buy into the battle pass and this is just overall it gets a little bit more, more messy with the live service, with the progression being monetized and things like that. It can be a bit tricky when it comes to doing campaign challenges. Though I would like to see campaign challenges and I hope to see them since challenges are tied to experience and if you're just a campaign player, you're not going to be earning any type of progression through the battle pass. Though the battle pass looks to be more kind of multiplayer focused with armor customizations and things like that. So it makes me kind of think that we're not going to really ever going to be able to bring in some kind of form of customization into the campaign side of things. Though I hope so. 
I doubt it. Again, that's something we might have to wait until we get closer to the release of Halo Infinite to understand these details a little bit better and see like how like challenges might be tied into the campaign. Can people who just play the campaign progress through the battle pass as well? And trust me, once we get that kind of information, I'll let you guys know on this channel. Mark Kendall asks, Hey Kevin, what armor sets from previous Halo games do you want to see come back in Infinite? Great videos, by the way. I understand all the details. Well, yes, I appreciate you taking the effort to understand all the details right there. I would like to see the Halo Wars armor set come into Halo Infinite, if that's ever going to be possible, which I certainly think it would be, because when you look at Jerome's armor set here, you can clearly see that this is the Halo Wars looking Spartan right here. They don't really look like anything from any other games, which so it stands out, but it's also very familiar at the same time, so it could totally work and blend in with like the Halo Reach armor set that we do know is going to be part of Season 1 of Halo Infinite as well, along with the Mark 7 Infinite type of armor. Now something that's really cool about this armor core system that we're going to have for Halo Infinite is that it does look like it's going to be able to allow multi-generational armor sets to be put into the game. And I do like the idea of these armor customizations being tied to cores as well. So you have visually distinct art styles and armor styles that won't really be mishmashed together to where you kind of just lose a sense of like that's a halo reach armor set that's an infinite armor set that's the yoroi fracture armor set you know i like having that bit of an organization so people can kind of show off that like oh that's that cool new one rather than that's just like a spartan so I think it would be awesome to see like Halo CE armor sets come in, to have Halo 4 armor sets come in as well. That's what's so great about the core system is that I do think it does allow this better expansion of customization and also allows people to maybe relive some of their favorite parts about Halo's customization throughout the decades has been around. But yeah, having drums armor set in the game would be sick. Just some Halo fan asks, what maps from previous games would you want to see in Infinite? For me, I would love to see Guardian, Sand Trap, High Ground, Terminal, District, Danger Canyon, Infinity, and Death Island all remade at some point. And yes, we all do have our favorite maps as well. And it's been pretty traditional throughout Halo for the most part to have some form of a remade map put into the multiplayer experience. Because having remade maps is one familiar, so you don't have to spend time learning the maps, it kind of pulls on the heartstrings of like, oh yes, my favorite map from back in the day kind of thing. And sometimes these maps that were made previously are just really good maps. Like one of the best maps in Halo 5 is Truth, which is a remake from Midship slash Heretic as well. And I would certainly love to see it come back as well. I mean, have it be almost like, you know, Halo's version of Nuketown, where it's like every game has to have their version of like some really awesome map that just plays from the classics. I would really like to see the pit return in Halo Infinite. One, I think it'd be really cool to play around with the pit now that you have the grapple shot involved with the game. There's so many tall walls and surfaces you can probably like loop around and do some really insane plays on that map really kind of open it up and do some really unique things because the biggest issue with that map is that it really funneled players down these hallways that to get to across to the other side of the map which led to it being kind of difficult to play capture the flag on and also kind of standoffish to play team slayer on though i do kind of like that kind of tug of war kind of aspect to those maps where minor things that happen have huge consequences like one player being taken out down rocket hall leaves that entire side open now to where you can push forward Another map I think absolutely needs to be remade in Halo Infinite is the map Blood Gulch. As Blood Gulch is basically the symbol of maps when it comes to Halo's multiplayer experience. I mean, 343 has stated that this is going to be a soft reboot and a big influence from games like Combat Evolved. And one of the maps that you think of when you think of Combat Evolved is Blood Gulch. Blood Gulch is also one of the most, if not the most remade map in the Halo franchise, being in CE, in Halo 2, being in Halo Reach as well, in which I cannot wait to be hosting Blood Gulch 24-7 lobbies for CE once CE comes to the custom game browser of MCC for Season 8. Though with Halo Infinite's weapons looking to be hit scan, that makes Blood Blood Gulch a very difficult map to make or balance out properly because with Hitscan, that was the biggest issue with Reach's version that you can basically just snipe someone across the map instantly and really hindered movement throughout the entirety of the map. That's why it works in CE and also why like Valhalla works in Halo 3. But if you tried putting Valhalla in Halo 4, well guess what? It kind of sucks. 
That's why playing Blood Gulch in H2A does feel a bit of a standoffish kind of map and very difficult to move around. I mean, when I'm playing that map, I'm always grabbing the sniper and basically sticking to the far edges of the map as possible. I'm never going into the middle because it's so hard to traverse because people can just snipe you across the map at any point with battle rifles. Another classic map I think would actually translate very well to the Halo Infinite art style would be the map Ridgeline from it's originally from CE and then was remade within Halo Reach. I think you could totally see that map coming back as well as it kind of fits the aesthetic. I mean, essentially with the, you take the Reach version and some vertical metal pillars and you have like Halo Infinite. So if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here for all my other Halo videos we've been uploading nearly daily about. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.